I like shooting um, documentary-like situations, uh, the skydiving, for instance, but then also uh, the scenes in the daycare. Uh, yeah, so to try to sort of find things to learn from and sort of grow, grow the process of it. I want to come back to some of that, but I want to go to Dara right away. Uh, I think this is a different kind of performance for you, maybe a different kind of character. Do you want to talk about what interested you about Anne and, and how she evolved? Um, yeah, I mean, there was some preliminary research about the character, but I think um, with Cass's process being the sort of shooting sporadically over a longer period of time, it was kind of about uh, learning about the character as we went and maybe a bit less of a um, trying to uh, sort of get into character and behave and replicate uh, certain characteristics um, each time and instead kind of just try and be present in the situation and allow there to be some sort of contradictions in the character and so for a sort of um, yeah to kind of almost learn who the character was kind of after the fact a tiny bit, if that makes any sense. <laughs> How does that actually translate into the, the shooting process, maybe from your perspective, Kaz, but also you, Dara, in terms of how much you're shooting, uh, how much you're controlling the situation, how much is written at either as a scenario or more specifically, and, and what the negotiation is between those sort of variables and, and the direction you want to take the story and the character? Either of you can. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's very controlled. I mean, there was a script, and there was a plan. But yeah, at the same time, we, we I suppose we love the feeling of being surprised and um, allowing things to happen. Um, yeah, and again, it was really a really tight collaboration between the two of us. Uh, sometimes everything would click and it would go as planned, and then other times it would fall flat and I'd be like, well, okay, well maybe this scene doesn't work. And then other times it would explode and I'm like, I thought that was a simple scene. And, uh, but it has all this potential and we try to sort of, yeah, um, learn from it and, uh, and follow it. I'm glad you shot a few films with Kaz. Uh, could you talk about what that process is like from your perspective, the approach to the cinematography and also the method of shooting for you? Yeah, this is our, I guess, fourth collaboration together. Um, two shorts, two features. Um, <laughs> so there's kind of a shorthand at this point. We kind of, it's almost unspoken. Like, I've read the script. We will go into each scene talking a bit about it uh, the day before or on the day because we have that kind of luxury. And um, yeah, it's kind of just the constant negotiation, kind of similar to. Dara and Kaz's process, I would say. Just kind of talking about it, figuring it out. If it works, great. If it doesn't, uh, working through it, trying new things. Um, but yeah, I think as a DP, this kind of style can be pretty unorthodox, sticking to like a close-up and like one perspective. But it's uh, a challenge that I really enjoy um, because I don't see many films like this and I don't think many films are up to that kind of challenge. So, um, yeah, it's rewarding in a way just to shoot in this style and try and put my own voice into it and, uh, yeah, kind of take it from there. And specifically shooting in situations that have, uh, you know, this spontaneity or this element of document, non-actors, sort of the mic is cutting out there, it sounds like, but, uh, is that a challenge for you? Is that different from the rest of the work? Is it something that you enjoy? No, it's amazing. Um, Kaz gives me a lot of freedom. He puts a lot of faith into me. We don't have a director's monitor, so a lot of the time I'm just like dancing around with Dara. It's kind of like, yeah, song and dance, and then we review the footage on set. Kaz will give me notes, he'll give Dara notes, and um, yeah, it is an unorthodox approach, but it is refreshing because I don't know how many filmmakers are in the audience, but we all know how uh, challenging a long set day can be, but Kaz is really open and flexible and uh, like a really good collaborator in that sense. And so there's, he gives me, uh, he puts me up to the challenge, he gives me these kind of roles with the close-up, but at the same time with lighting or with any kind of um, 
interpretation to his instruction, he's so open to. So, yeah, it's great. I imagine trust is a big part of making that kind of collaboration possible, whether with you as a cinematographer, with Dara as an actor, or other people involved in the film. Kaz, could you talk about the approach you take to working with people? Yeah, I mean, um, the whole process, everyone on the crew is a, is a major collaborator. Everyone is sort of artistically very engaged. Everyone from Nikolai and Dara, but our editor, Isla, producer, Dan Montgomery, we're a very tight-knit group. And then beyond that, yeah, it's, um, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, Dara and I are friends, and sort of, it's like, you know, people I know very well. I mean, Matt Johnson, who um, supported the role, I mean, my mother is in the film, a number of uh, the daycare workers who work at that daycare. So yeah, that's um, always a big part of it, is sort of surrounding our, ourselves with the right people, and people with a lot of depth and a lot to sort of share um, to sort of enrich the process. I realize I'm hogging the mic. I'll throw it to the audience after this one, but you mentioned the daycare. Could you talk about the choice to set it in the daycare, why that was uh, you know, meaningful and interesting to you? And, and how that collaboration specifically with shooting the daycare worked. So yeah, I mean, I mentioned my mom. Um, funny enough, the last film was about rugby. My dad was a rugby player. This film, uh, about a daycare worker. My mom has worked at that daycare for 40 years. Uh, she just retired. Uh, she plays the supervisor. Um, I went to that daycare as a child. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a you know, a sort of um, interesting moment to go back there as an adult and see, um, these women who looked after me as a child and then now see them as adults. So that definitely played an influence. But then on top of that, just um, the unique access we had to it. Um, half the scenes in the film were shot with child actors, but the other half were shot in sort of live rooms with children. 200 children go to this daycare. It's one of the largest daycares in Toronto. And yeah, I'm, I'm drawn to it for these personal reasons, but I also I think it's, um, yeah, it captures something about Toronto, I think. Um, it's a community I'm interested in, and uh, yeah, so that was having, yeah, I like to write for things like that, or these sort of um, uh, environments or institutions that are just so loaded with, uh, with things. So um, yeah, the daycare was, a, was always a, a huge part of it. Any questions in the audience? Please raise your hand, otherwise I will keep going. Tom. The skydiving, where did that come from? I, I'm assuming you all three had to do it. Had, had any of you done it before, and what was the experience like doing it for the movie? I think maybe everyone heard that. The question was about the skydiving. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. Um, well, it skydived a couple times, um, but the first time was the first day of shooting. Um, <laughs> which, um, yeah, I mean, is maybe just a really uh, literal uh, version of my process, if I can say that I have one, um, just in that you uh, can't completely uh, anticipate or control your reaction, um, and then you do it, and you see how you react, and that kind of gives you some information about uh, the character. Um, she was supposed to really like skydiving, um, but I really didn't like it. <laughs> so I, I look really scared. But I think that makes it more funny when she insists that she really likes it. What, more about skydiving? I didn't skydive. Um, I wanted to, but you need a thousand jumps to actually operate a camera in the sky uh, with a parachute and with a skydive team. So I strapped a bunch of cameras to a, a professional diver's head and bottom. <laughs> but yeah, Nikolai flew the most, and you, you don't like flying, and these planes were terrifying, yeah. these tiny little planes. I'm afraid of heights. That final shot is Nikolai strapped in the plane, or you have a parachute on in case the plane crashes. Yeah. I mean, we were shooting most of the plane stuff at a skydiving school, I guess, but they also do jumps for I guess like events or bachelorette parties or what have you. So the people who work there are kind of like these skydiving adrenaline junkie bros and they really don't like to make you feel comfortable. Like they kind of try to psych you out the whole time. So every time I went in the airplane, they would give me a parachute and they'd say, 
if shit goes down, just forget about the camera. Pull this cord, you're gonna break your legs, but at least you'll be alive, so. <laughs> I think I saw another hand. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, I'll be blunt. The film makes me really uncomfortable. Um, I feel uncomfortable almost throughout the entire film. From the fact that it's always so close to the character being kind of like almost unhinged with kids, to the skydiving, all of it is just uncomfortable. And, uh, for me, anyway. Is that your intention? <laughs> so the question is about uh, how discomforting the film can be, both in terms of how it's shot and the content and also the emotional state of the character, and whether or not that's something that's intended in the film. Uh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've been shooting the style for a while. Uh, when I was like a younger filmmaker, I just sort of loved this feeling of intimacy and realism. But as I've made more and more films, I really like the feeling of being uncomfortable, that we shouldn't be too comfortable being this close to someone. Um, but I like sort of delaying and easy reading, and yeah, that we shouldn't be too privileged when we watch them. So yeah, um, that is part of, yeah. I mean, that's the headspace I want us to be in. I, Yeah, I think it's something, though, about the character, too, that she, I mean, she has this desire for closeness with people, and it kind of makes her um, kind of uh, try a little bit too hard and sort of alienate people. So I do hope that while there is something abrasive about it, there is this kind of maybe slightly misguided um, attempt to be close to people as well. Um, that hopefully also, you know, that desire for understanding is also present throughout. I mean, I think uh, with most films, um, we take for granted how unconsciously close we are allowed to be to, to characters and in, in narratives, and I think Kaz's style kind of forces us to confront that proximity a little more, which I find interesting. Yeah, Zach. So the question is about the challenge of uh, working with the children in the film. I feel like all three of you could probably uh, factor in on this, so who wants to go first? I mean, shooting it is very practical. Like Taz said, we kind of take a documentary approach, so um, there's no like specific you know, kind of approach to it. We, we kind of just... Like I said, it's a song and dance. We all Gara, we see her interacting with the kids. There is a goal between Gara and Kaz, but for me, it's just making sure that I get the shot. And I think a lot of, of this, those scenes, we have to credit to Isla because she kind of can construct those scenes with Kaz um, out of all the footage that we get from a pretty documentary situation. Yeah, I mean, um Sure, it's, it's tough working with children or animals. I mean, that's the, um, but yeah, it's something we always seek out, I think. We like, we like the, how it charges the scene, or I, I like working with children. Um, so yeah, the chaos it provides and the sort of spontaneity. Sometimes it's, you know, the butterfly scene at the opening, or other times it's uh, Oliver. Oliver definitely inspired a lot of those scenes, all the, all the stuff with the sharks uh, was something we found on set. Um, but yeah, at the, at the same time, um, I mean, we spend a lot of time talking with the parents and with the children and making sure it's the right scenario. Uh, we sort of design it like an acting camp, so we shoot every Saturday for two or three hours. Uh, so some of those scenes are actually quite constructed, shot over multiple days, weeks apart. Um, so there is quite a lot of construction within that at times. But at the same time, yeah, again, what I really love is just sort of like dialogue. You can't. Right, or just finding sort of these moments, and, uh, and yeah, and kids are always uh, or the, the type of child actors I like working with are always sort of in the moment, and there's there's less ego, and it's yeah, it's always 
yeah, it's something I, I gravitate more and more to. So this film was, I mean, there's scenes with children in my other films with this, but I think we really wanted to, to hone in and, and really have a, a major part of uh, the texture of the film. Yeah. Thoughts on kids? Um, yeah, no, it's really funny, um, like, I guess it's kind of just about controlling the energy of the room, so, I mean, for me, I just have to be there and be paying attention to them and interacting with them, but then, like, if, if for instance, if you really engage with them, the energy goes way up and sometimes has to be brought down. And then at times when I would have to be more withdrawn, you would just like see all the kids get incredibly quiet um, and sort of watchful and timid. And so it was sort of a matter of, um, yeah, I guess Kaz kind of having to corral that situation <laughs> and, and sort of, yeah, I guess together, um, like in a lot of the film, just trying to, if we have a point that we want to get the scene to, figuring out between the two of us how to steer it into that place. More questions? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your time for speaking with us and congratulations on the film, really, really good stuff. I wanted to ask you about the style of the such close-ups and if you ever get worried that maybe you're missing out on, on something by not pulling back. I know you've mentioned already that this is sort of your style with your previous films, but you know, is that ever something that comes up when, when it comes to even acting on it or, you know, shooting it or directing it? Like, you know, do you ever worry about that? And can, can you also maybe speak a little bit about the feeling or sort of what you're trying to achieve by staying so close to, to all the characters? So the question is about uh, elaborating on the style, but not just the style and why you use it, but if you're ever worried about missing something, I guess, outside of frame and, and if there's like a risk maybe of not capturing everything that's going on. Um, and then the second part of that was what he's chasing after in that approach. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I spoke about it a bit earlier, this idea of liking it, feeling uncomfortable and these sort of different things. But I think another aspect of it is I, I do like the restraint of it, or at least um, I, I like that sort of focus on performance help, I mean, in some way helps me sort of ground um, what we see. Like, I like limitation. I like it being somewhat limited in that the camera can see this, but can't see everything. I think it kind of acknowledges our viewpoint. Um, but then beyond that too, it's just how I think and how I feel. Uh, again, a lot of it, this does come from when I was, you know, a decade ago making my first shorts, that it's sort of, when I write or imagine things, it is sort of in this realm. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things going on, but um, but yeah, r rarely is it um, a problem, or I think it's always a good problem. I think it always, for me, it always kind of twists into an inspiring thing somehow. Um, it very rarely is like, a, do I wish that we could cut to a wide or, or something. Um, but yeah, it, it's again, it's something I've been working with for a while, so there's other, you know, sound becomes more present, or choice of location is it, sort of, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Conversely, as a performer, what is that like actually to have the camera in close proximity and how that might affect uh, the range of like physically how you're performing and if that's a challenge and, and if you like that uh, process? Um, well, that's I think where Nikolai also becomes a big part of it because um, I really am really not actually having to think way too much about if I am in frame because I know that Nikolai is following me <laughs> and, and um, Nikolai has a real um, awareness I think of, of the narrative and um, the elements that are most essential for him to be aware of at the different times. Um, I think in some ways it's really freeing as an actor because we are, you know, shooting these really long sequences but in close-up, so I do know that it is going to be cut quite a lot, 
So you, there can be these moments where you become really engaged with what's going on and like very absorbed. And then there can be moments where, you know, maybe you get a bit into your own head again. Um, and, and you can kind of allow for that movement a tiny bit more. <laughs> I feel like you moving over implies that Nick yeah, should feel the next thing. You cool, Nick? I'm cool. Okay. Uh, there's one more hand. Yes. Is it also um, about forced or premature intimacy between, in, our, in our culture and how, how we get to know people and how we're acquainted with them and how we're sometimes forced into that? So yeah, the question is about the human interactions in the film and maybe the insight into forced intimacy or rushed intimacy in uh, the characters' relationships. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like that observation. I think even the skydiving is something to do with that, the sort of forced emotional experience or forced intensity. And I think it's, um, yeah, the character is someone that's perhaps at times looking for that, looking for ways uh, to connect or um, force an intimacy, if I understood what you, what you meant by that. Yeah, like in the, in the relationship with Matt, for instance, it's true, like, um, she meets him, um, and so she kind of, maybe based on societal norms, kind of decides what that maybe means, and that sort of, um, that kind of desire to have that maybe makes her think that she has it already, um, and sort of uh, maybe act on some assumptions before, like, like the scene, for instance, where she plays this joke on him, she kind of thinks, um, she kind of thinks that that is is a bit of a, a gift or is a sort of a sort of adventure that they're on together and instead of actually like i don't know maybe paying attention to him and seeing kind of uh what he might actually want or need um yeah but there is a sort of yeah an over excitability that i think is comes from a very genuine place um but maybe does become a kind of strange narcissism as well Well, I want to remind everyone again that you can see Dara in MS Slavic 7 tomorrow night, which she also co-directed. Nikolai also directed a short film that we have in the program that plays Sunday before the feature film Danny. Thank you so much for staying for the Q&A. Thank you so much for being with us here in Vancouver. <laughs>